Hello and welcome to iBuzz. I'm your host, Nasheen Bukhari. In today's special episode, we will pay a tribute to the late actor Chadwick Boseman, followed by a movie review on A Hologram for the King. Chadwick Boseman was an American actor. He is known for his portrayal of T'Challa in Black Panther, the Marvel Cinematic Universe from 2016 to 2019, particularly in Black Panther. In this segment, we will pay a tribute to the late actor with comic writer Kaya Ahmed. Kaya, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to the show. So, Kaya, a legend whose demise was way too early when he was at the peak of his career. What are your thoughts on Chadwick Boseman? Um, I think just to sum it up, he was an inspiration, uh, you know, to the community, especially the black community. Um, mm -hmm. You know, starting from Black Panther, but even before that, you know, he was just such a good actor. He was such a master of his craft, and you know, mm. uh, it was clear after he passed away that you know his demise just really it sent waves across the global community not just for his role as black panther but as a human and for his work ethic and mm -hmm. you know, just for how he puts a hundred always put a hundred percent into any role that he did mm -hmm. um the last role before he passed away it was mm -hmm. uh, it was such a good movie i remember watching it and i i was just sad that we'll never get to see him on screen again because he was just so talented mm -hmm. True. It was devastating for the fans indeed. And his, in his honor, the new Black Panther filmmakers have decided to revamp the entire story rather than replacing another actor for Chadwick's character. Yeah, um, it's it's actually not unheard of. Um, this has been done before in comics itself. You know, the, the moniker of Black Panther has been carried around by so many different characters in the Marvel Universe. Uh, you know, uh, in some arcs, in fact, it's uh, it's T'Challa's sister, Shuri, who mm -hmm. uh, takes up the moniker of Black Panther. So the mm -hmm. Black Panther essentially is is not a person. It's it's a mantle that is passed on mm -hmm. through families. And I think in a way, it's, you know, it's a bit poignant that, you know, now that uh, Chadwick is gone, uh, mm -hmm. his on-screen sister may actually take over the mantle mm -hmm. uh, in his absence. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's... It's, of course, it's so devastating that not having to see T'Challa's arc yes. completely. So yeah, Chaya, his absence will be absolutely missed in the new Black Panther. And for some fans, it will be very difficult to grasp the reality while watching the movie that, you know, uh, Black Panther is no longer being played by Chadwick Boseman. Yeah, of course, you know, um, you when you when you watch these movies, you feel a certain connection to characters. You know, I have a favorite character, but you know, it's different for someone like Chadwick or for someone like T'Challa because he was such hmm. a role model for the black community around the world. You know, they really, really related to him. He was one of the, more, one of the first, but he was one of the first authentically played hmm. uh, black superheroes. You know, we hmm. had Blade before and stuff, but you know, he represented African culture in a way that it hasn't been seen on screen before. And, you know, mm. he was just associated with that. And it's just, it's, he carried that character with such, you know, mm. there was just a kingsmanship about him, you know. He was the king. He looked yes. like a king. He carried himself like royalty. And of course, you can't fill in somebody's shoes. You just can't. You can't. That's why mm. I'm glad they didn't recast the actor yes. or the role. True. So, True. Yeah, and, and, and Kaya, his movies like Message from the King, Get on Top, Heaven, and Marshall, and many others have been marvelous as well. Of course, the majority knows him as Black Panther, but what do you think of his performance in other movies? Oh, I loved his performance in other movies. I think his last movie, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, that yes. was such a good movie. It was so... He, like I said, he just puts a hundred percent into all his roles. He's he's, mm -hmm. he's never been typecasted, even with the uh, you know the Marvel moniker on him. He's never really been typecasted as you know just Black Panther. People know him as Black Panther, but he was never typecasted, and that's what I really love. He mm -hmm. shows range. He goes from comedy, he goes True. from uh, thrillers, he goes to action, and he's just mm -hmm. very seamless. In, he was very seamless in how he did it, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's you know you, you never knew the range that he had until you saw his whole repertoire of movies. In fact, the first, one of his first movies where he played a baseball player. Mm -hmm. That was such a good movie. That was one of his breakout roles. And he was just so good in what he did. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, he was a versatile actor, of course. But in your opinion, what signifies Chadwick's performance when it comes to the movies? 
I think his fashion. Um, I think just he had this way of acting with his eyes, mm-hmm. which not a lot of actors can do. That they, you know, they they get the body language down, but th- it doesn't quite reach their eyes. And I feel like it's a very strange thing to say, but Chadwick was a mm-hmm. very good actor just with his eyes. He had that intensity in his eyes yes. that really showed through when he carried a serious scene. Like he has made me cry many times, mm-hmm. and just because of pure passion mm-hmm. alone. And of course, finding out later on that you know a lot of the movies that he did, he did while he was. you know battling cancer and you know yeah. that's insane all those work hours of uh, keeping so, himself in that uh, physical maintaining that physicality that he had to do for like for marble films as well yeah. all while battling cancer that's that's very very hard absolutely to do. absolutely and, and, and and Kaya it was really great to see Chadwick being remembered on the Academy Awards ceremony Uh, he has been a winner of Golden Globe Award and five times winner of Screen Actors Guild Award. But specifically remembering him as a nomination in the Academy Award this year, this was devastating as well as you know very uh, heartwarming for many of his fans. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, a lot of actors have passed away or have you know mm-hmm. even now. With having retired, have not received an Academy Award. Um, I believe Heath Ledger was posthumously awarded yes. for Dark Knight, but you know a lot of actors have gone without an award. But I don't think an award should really be the moniker for them or for their success. Mm-hmm. I think Chadwick's success is in the legacy he leaves behind, just as an, uh, you know, with his body of work. and how people remember him even now like people go to disney world they see black panther kids go there young black kids go there and they see someone like oh mm-hmm. he was that person maybe we can be that person to maybe we can become that person so that's the legacy he leaves behind mm-hmm. the awards are great i i commend the awards but the legacy that he's left behind as a black actor i think that is very very poignant and that is what will truly be celebrated in the long run true and uh, people from marvel universe are the most missing uh, chadwick and his presence kevin feige the ar- architect of mcu expressed that chadwick is an amazing actor who he thought would fit perfectly in the mcu and we all all saw that happening yeah i mean you know he um i i mean if, ha- if what ha- happened didn't happen i mm-hmm. feel like the black panther would have been a great leader for the mcu mm-hmm. You know, in Iron Man's absence, it was either Captain Marvel or T'Challa who would have taken up the mantle. And I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, we—it's a bit sad. Of course, it is bittersweet. I wish I could have seen T'Challa on screen in Black Panther 2, or then mm-hmm. going on and leading the Avengers. I think it would have been amazing. But you know, life is short, and yes. you know, life is bittersweet that way. True, and and a real life fighter who kept working despite the fact that he was still struggling. He was battling with cancer. but he was at the same time seen on on movie sets you know working 24/7 and dealing with his health issues at the same time never let anyone feel about his health and the, the deteriorating health that he was you know going through yeah of course he's he's an inspiration to be honest you know i i am inspired personally by his actions i feel like everybody who has met him has been touched by him by his uh you know his work ethic the way he's always you know carried himself on set i have heard nothing but nice things about him yes. no one has said that he was you know rude to anybody on set or he made his uh, ailment show or he acted out of turn because of it you know he carried mm-hmm. himself with great dignity um i can't say that about a lot of actors in in today's day and age and even back then you know nobody carried themselves with such dignity under such pressure There's mm. always a crack that shows, but I think in some way Chadwick knew that he had such an immense responsibility to mm. the world, and he mm. carried that responsibility and made sure that even under such circumstances, it never True. showed. True. And people from uh, Black Panther set, they uh, expressed that how he would, you know, prefer doing his stunts on his own, um, while you know coming back from his chemotherapies and you know feeling very weak, but at the same time. He never said no or never asked for help, especially in in his stunts. Yeah, I mean, again, it just it stems from that responsibility. You know, it's it's a responsibility that he has as as a leading black man in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. That you know, he's battling these circumstances, and he doesn't want that you know people see him differently because they're already perceived differently, and doesn't want to even mm-hmm. seem more different. And I think it, it just 
again, it just speaks of his immense bravery. I don't, I don't yes. know many people. I, I for certain would never have been able to do that. I feel like I would have buckled mm. under the pressure. And that just speaks of the immense internal strength that he had, and the way he had conditioned himself to, you know, perform optimally. I mean, you know, stunts is one thing, but you know, again, mm -hmm. you're, you're under these harnesses which are very uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, you know, you're in these suits that are airtight. You sometimes cannot breathe. That's and for him to exactly. go through all of that, you know, it just, it's. You, you can't really fathom it, honestly speaking. Yes, and and the, the movie shoots, they took like two and a half years to wrap up. Yeah, and those two and a half years, you know, you have to consider as well that, you know, those are 24 hour shoots sometimes. Yes. Sometimes they go over schedule and he had to, you know, work around and incorporate his chemotherapy schedule into that as well. So, you know, again, it's just, it's a testament to professionalism. It's a testament mm. to strength. It's a testament to courage and you know performing under pressure and i feel like you know all of us can learn from that and all of us have so much to learn from what he has left behind and how he has set an example for all of mm. us indeed a remarkable actor who left wonderful memories for his fans Chaya, thank you very much indeed great discussion thank you so much that was Chaya ahmed paying a tribute to the late actor chadwick boseman we will take a quick short break here and we'll be back with a movie review Stay tuned. Welcome back. In this segment, we will review the movie A Hologram for the King. A beautiful doctor and a wise ice-cracking taxi driver help an American businessman who is trying to close the deal of a lifetime in Saudi Arabia. Released in 2016, this Tom Hanks starer backed two German film awards for Best Sound Design and Best Editing. To review the movie, we are joined by none other than film critic Matt Capon. Matt, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, thank you. The film was voted for tags like slow, romantic, great locations, unre unrealistic story, funny plot holes and forgettable. What is your opinion on that? I think that's incredibly cruel. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really enjoyable film. Yes. It's a classic Tom Hanks film, but the trouble is Tom Hanks is known for these roles and it doesn't yes. really stand out from other films that, that mm -hmm. he's been in. But for anyone that's actually read the Dave Eggers book uh, yes. that the film is actually based on, it's okay. really, really, um, it's really good for lack of a better yes. word. It's a very good translation of what mm -hmm. is a very enjoyable book, but I can understand why the vast majority of the cinema going public and critics mm -hmm. alike saw it as being just another Tom Hanks film. It's sad really because I think it deserves a lot more love than it's received since its first release in 2016. True. And Matt, viewers from Saudi Arabia appreciated most of the efforts as according to Saudi critics, the story busted a lot of myths about a foreigner's lifestyle in Saudi Arabia. So it's more of an understanding the environment uh, than, you know, understanding the story of the movie. Yes, I think it is one of those films that has it has a reliance on geographical understanding yes. and social understanding based on what life is like in Saudi. And I think the character of Youssef and his relationship with Alan is mm. fantastic because you see that interplay of mm. what it's like talking with a outsider coming into Saudi. I really enjoyed that. I thought mm -hmm. I thought um, the two of them were really, really, were really, really good on screen. So Matt, the cast was very minimal in this movie. So how well defined did you see each character in this movie? I felt that the I, I felt that the characters in the film really had had mm. a lot of time to flesh out their story their story mm. arcs. I thought you got to really understand. Um, how Alan's mm -hmm. story was progressing, what his relationship was was um, blossoming into mm -hmm. with, with, with Zara. It was, I found it enjoyable, but it can be argued that it was also quite slow and a little mm -hmm. bit unimaginative in that respect. And I think this is where the film really fell down. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it's a, it's a shame really, because when you actually look at the cast, it has Tom Skerritt in it. Um, a fantastic actor, huge mm -hmm. pedigree, but there was an expectation for this, and sadly, I don't think for many people it actually delivered. Mm -hmm. uh, but when one looks at the movie, especially if you are relating to the, the geography of Saudi Arabia, 
you can see that the movie was, you know, created very carefully. It was crafted very carefully. And that is why uh, not much of a criticism was received from Saudi Arabians. Because it is, uh, at the end of the day, it is, you know, very difficult topic. It is kind of, you can say, a no-go area for uh, most of the filmmakers where they would not dare to make a movie on the environment of Saudi Arabia and touching such a, a sensitive topic. Yes, it was it was very, very brave to um, mm -hmm. to adapt the book um, on screen, given the yes. subject of it. I think one of the scenes that I, I enjoy the most is when Alan is being explained what exactly the development is going to look like, mm -hmm. when you can tell from the eyes of Alan as yes. a very staunch North American, it's just a desert. But actually, mm -hmm. there's a vision there. There's an understanding that, yes, there'll be a university over there, but mm -hmm. he couldn't see it. And for a lot of the a lot of the Western movie going audience, that'll be quite an unusual thing to watch. But I can imagine for the Saudi cinema going public, it actually is quite refreshing to see that being portrayed on the screen. Yes. And Matt, about the plot holes and the movie being slow and forgettable, I mean, why do you think, uh, in your opinion, why would critics, you know, um, come up with such opinions for this movie? The expectation of a Tom Hanks film has always been he's been he's been hamstrung by his time on Sleepless in Seattle and big. Yeah. People expect there to be a little bit more anima animated um, mm. action on 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 screen, but this was very this was a lot more slow. It was a lot more thoughtful. Mm. It required the audience to really engage and mm. sit there and understand the story. I mean, when he finds the lump, um, mm. to understand exactly what that means, but but also what that means to find that when you're in another country, in another part of the world. Mm. It asked a lot of the audience, and I don't think the audience was, was really prepared to listen. Mm -hmm. Right. And Matt, what are your thoughts on the supporting cast, especially uh, Sarita Chaudhry and Omar Elba's character? Oh, Yusuf's right. One of my favourite characters in the film after Tom Hanks, hands down. Mm. I, think he, I think he has that wide-eyed <laughs> excitement when he, when he first meets Alan, but then as he becomes... They build up that rapport, that understanding. Mm -hmm. You see that there's a friendship there, where there's yeah. much more to there's much more to him, and I love that because there's layers to him. But you mm -hmm. don't realise that when they first meet each other in the taxi. Um, mm -hmm. And I think um, Zara, the character, is. Yeah. You see, there's an elegance to her. There is mm -hmm. there is a poise to her, which really strikes out on the screen. I don't think I don't think she gets the credit she deserves for that role, if I'm being quite honest. And of course, mm -hmm. we have we have Ben Wisher as well, um, Q from James Bond, someone else mm -hmm. who actually does quite good for the screen time that he has during the film. Absolutely. And Matt, can we talk about uh, the great locations this movie was filmed at, uh, and the editing skills that their editors have put into? Because of that, the film managed to you know bag an award uh, in German film film awards. Oh, the editing in this film is exemplary, it's second mm -hmm. to none, and it deserves every plaudit it's received. Mm -hmm. You can tell, and speaking as someone who, who is a video editor, mm -hmm. there is a deft touch here which the editing really draws out the best from, best from the story. It mm -hmm. is just, it's exceptional. And the, cinemat the cinematography, when he first arrives in Saudi, and that build-up of being mm -hmm. being in the airport, going through customs, yeah. it's the little touches that make all of the difference that really add to the power. Yes. And uh, 2016 was a transitional period for Saudi uh, cinema itself. So uh, in that case, this movie has done a lot of favor to, to, to Saudi cinema as well, you know, showing the the bright side of Saudi Arabia and a lifestyle that one can have over there. Yes, it, it, it offered a new look to Saudi, mm. um, yeah. which I think was refreshing. It, it, was, mm -hmm. it was really good to see, and who else to lead mm. the charge better than, than Tom Hanks in this film? But I think, as I said, I think it was perhaps a little bit too, mm -hmm. too much ahead of its time. Yeah. And if it were released maybe this year, Mm -hmm. or, or even last year, I think the reception to it would have been a lot more softer and a, and a lot more positive mm -hmm. than it was in 2016. And I think that's really, really a shame because I think, mm -hmm. as I've said previously, this film deserved a lot more praise than it sadly received. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Matt, we all know that Tom Hanks is, of course, known for exploring roles like these. And uh, in this movie, he has given best of his performance. 
Uh, but do you think that it could have been better had there been an other actor instead of Tom Hanks? Because, of course, there is a stamp on it, uh, stamp on, on, on uh, Tom Hanks for playing such roles. Absolutely not. Um, I think Tom Hanks is the Hollywood everyman. He is mm -hmm. someone who you can relate to, who you can invest in, and you can really see the mm -hmm. journey that he's taking taking you on on screen. And I think the chemistry that he has with Sarita Chowdhury is phenomenal. Yeah, it really it really does sparkle mm -hmm. um, on screen, realistically. And mm -hmm. I think another actor would have struggled to have portrayed that bringing together of two people from two very different mm -hmm. cultures finding common ground and ultimately as implied at the end love yes and uh, sarita's character talking about her character uh that gave a very different vibe a vibe of a strong woman who is you know battling uh her her own demons she is fighting with a lot of ongoing struggles in in, in her life and at the end there is a transition and you know she comes out of her comfort zone and you know she's she's ready to try new things being a saudi woman that is also yet another myth that was busted through this movie that women in Saudi are strong and they, they know how to stand their grounds. I want to see more of it on screen. I thought it was great. And I think Western, the Western cinema going audience needs to see more characters like that yeah. in films that come out of Hollywood. It was really, really refreshing. Mm -hmm. And to begin with, I had my doubts, but she took me on that mm -hmm. journey to actually understand what her character was fighting with, what the struggles were, and how she found that common ground with Alan. Yeah. And I really enjoy I really enjoyed it. And the final act of the film with the two of them mm -hmm. with the two of them together where you see actually yeah. there is a future there for the two yeah. of them. I thought it, it was a really nice bookend to the film for the yes. for the journey of the two characters. Yes, and it was really beautiful in the end that they left a lot for, for the viewers' imagination. I mean, it didn't end in a very typical way. It was a happy, but with a lot of question marks ending, you can say. Yes, and that's, I think, one of the most endearing mm -hmm. parts of the film is it leaves you thinking, well, what happens next? There's no finality to it. There's no mm -hmm. explanation what happens with, what happens with Alan. Does, mm -hmm. uh, what's his new career? What's he doing? There's lots of implied suggestions mm -hmm. that he's moving into property and that he's found happiness that he didn't otherwise have. Yes. But it makes you go away thinking for yourself, well, what, what's he doing now? And I like that. That's really, for mm -hmm. me, what a really good film should be all about. Mm -hmm. Letting right. the audience think right. what happened next. Absolutely. And Matt, being a film critic, how would you rate the movie on a scale of one to 10? I would have to give this a very solid seven. Uh -huh. um, I think for many people it hasn't aged well, but I would implore you give it another go, revisit mm -hmm. it and see it through a fresh pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. Tom Hanks is exceptional in it and it's a challenging subject. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't read the book, do read the book as well and you'll yeah. see exactly just how faithful mm -hmm. the film adaptation is. It's, yeah. it's really enjoyable and it'd be one that I would encourage everyone to give a second chance, sit down and enjoy. Hmm. And I would disagree when somebody says about this movie that it's a for forgettable material because at many levels when uh, a lot of people have, you know, asked me for, for a very gen gentle comedy movie, I have uh, personally recommended them to watch this movie. Quite right too. Mm -hmm. Hologram for the King is, is a film I, I, would, I would recommend mm -hmm. to someone who's looking for some, a simple film that's enjoyable, that takes you on a fantastic trip for a man moving from North America into the Kingdom of Saudi and mm. fo following him on his journey where he ultim ultimately finds happiness and love. What's not to love about that story? True. And a moment of truth, Matt. Uh, three reasons why would you recommend this movie to our viewers? No problem. I'd say the first reason I'd say is Tom Hanks. Tom mm. Hanks gives a fantastic portrayal of mm -hmm. Alan, a man who is struggling with unhappiness and the burden yeah. of responsibility in his life in North America. Mm -hmm. And he goes on a journey, understanding the changes he needs to bring, in, bring about in himself and those around him to find happiness. And mm -hmm. he ultimately does find it. Um, the second reason I would say is the character of y uh, Yusef. He's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, camaraderie, that partnership, mm. that friendship between him and Alan is fantastic and you really see someone who you think at the start is a clown mm -hmm. but actually you realise no, there is humour there but there is heart there mm. is pathos to him so to see how that friendship 
really blossoms and how right. he actually feels and is worried for Alan. Mm -hmm. And third, I would have to say, is the editing. Mm -hmm. um, watch it for just how it portrays the sweeping landscapes mm -hmm. of um, Saudi, how it really brings people who Absolutely. have never visited Saudi mm -hmm. to understand exactly what life is like out there. It really does its best to try and show you an authentic view that mm -hmm. isn't hamstrung, that is original and mm -hmm. it's enjoyable. True. Matt, it was great reviewing this movie with you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks a lot for your time. That was Matt Capon reviewing A Hologram for the King. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care and goodbye.